Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsessions will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dork down for a while. Hey, it's Jackie Cation. Welcome to the Dork Forest. You know the websites, JackieCation.com, DorkForest.com, TheDorkForest.com. It is February, and this month we are sponsored by Jeff Fulmer, who wrote a great book that is um, on, it's an ebook on Amazon called Firebird Jim. Firebirdjim.com is his website, and I read it. It's, it's great. If you like aliens and high school and James Dean, and it's dark and smart and funny, and it's episodic, so it kind of reminds me a little bit of a comic book. But I read the first one. It's great if you have some way to read an ebook, which involves a computer, which is how you're listening to this. You can also get the Kindle app, a Nook, all of these things. You can read it on your computer. He'd probably skyride it for you. But just go to Amazon and look up Firebird Jim, and he is our sponsor this month, and I recommend his book. There you go. The other thing I should tell you before we begin, allthingscomedy.com is the podcast network that I am with, and they are great. A couple of podcasts, if you go to allthingscomedy.com, that are not mine are Crab Feast. I was on an episode of that. That's a storytelling one. Tom Papa, come to Papa. Uh, that guy, Tom Papa, great stand-up comic. He has a he has a podcast. And Aaron Foley, friend of the show, has Sports Without Balls. And there's a boatload of others. So go to allthingscomedy.com. And welcome to the show. Let's do this. Hello and welcome to the Dork Forest, ladies and gentlemen. It's San Francisco Sketch Fest. Sketchy Fest, the sketchiest of all fests. Uh, sitting next to me here on this very special dork panel, uh, the lovely and talented Janet Varney, uh, one of the founders of the fest. Very exciting. Sitting next to her, the lovely and talented Ron Funches. Hello. <laughs> and sitting next to him, a guy who loves an entrance, Todd Glass, whose dorkdom is OCD. And uh, there you go, live it up. Does everybody have their uh, their microphones? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't know that yours is on, uh, Janet Varney. I think it's a it's a it's a problem of the. I blame it on the man. Oh yeah. Todd glasses isn't on either. So unprofessional. This is the way it uh, it all falls apart. A little bit on. Oh no, it's definitely on. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? It's on. It's on. <laughs> <laughs> Try it now. Oh, no. All right, there's more to it. I'll be sharing my microphone with uh, Janet Varney and Brian, the sound guy. How about a round of applause for Brian, who has been up and down the stairs Yay. about four times trying to get me, get it all to work. I bought a DI box on the, uh, on the uh, suggestion of one Zach McGeever of Nerdist. And uh, and it doesn't work. I got a bad one. That's right. It's a fascinating story. I'm going to tell many of them just like that one throughout this evening. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be dork panel. And um, Janet Farney, what is your dorkdom? Uh, tonight I'm very excited to dork out on uh, places like this, like uh, science sure. centers or well, we are at the California Academy of Sciences. Uh, it is a combination of the planetarium, naturalist museum, and aquarium. All right, uh, that is an exciting. That'll be an exciting darkdom. Uh, and then uh, Ron Funches, what is your? Uh, what is yours? Well, I have many. Uh, whether it be wrestling or the Tomb Raider, currently I like a lot of Tomb Raider. You doing a lot of Tomb Raider right Raiding now? Raiding a lot of tombs. Uh, <laughs> but I felt it's mostly appropriate. Like I'm really right now, I'm into the Legend of Korra a lot. So I feel like that's what I should talk about since I'm sitting next to Cora, and now I'm very nervous. It is kind of excited, a little nervous, a little mm-hmm. nervous about it. Uh, and then, as much as I know I'll regret this, I'm going to give my microphone to Todd Glass. <laughs> <laughs> what is your, uh, what is your dorkdom, sir? You know, I'm not sure what it is yet. I have a few to pick from. Oh, yeah. So I'm not sure what I want to admit. What? I like the box. I pick a real tough one. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to tell you, but I like the box. Uh, so, no, do we have you to do... Them. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, corrugated boxes. Uh, oh, so, corrugated boxes. Okay, that's much more. <laughs> so, can I, I don't have to tell you yet, right? 
Yeah, no, no, the show's on. Oh, on. I thought you said you were teasing it, like, and then we'll come back to you. You want to, oh, it's just one, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's no big deal, but it's like, it's like, it's admit something that you like, you're embarrassed to like. Or that you... Glee wouldn't count, would it? No. Um, oh, are they going to get any of my fucking jokes, or am I going to have to just have a shitty night here? <laughs> Obviously, I did the old... Glee wouldn't matter, would it? Like the guy that doesn't know the mic. Does this one song. work? Look at how nice I like, this one is. Here. I like to look at a, uh, a set table. Oh, a set table? Yeah, like if I have company, I'll set the table the night before, and I fucking love looking at it. And, uh, and I shouldn't be embarrassed of that, because it's, a, it's sort of an artistic... T- but it is. It's embarrassing. Do you I make do like a centerpiece? Why do you have to ask questions like that? What type of interview is this? Is that that you're doing no, a set list? I'm kidding. Set, okay. Do I have a centerpiece? N- nothing particular. Do you do Make- a, like a lot? I, I, I think flowers. I think uh, fake flowers. I think real flowers. I think a chandelier. I think... It sounds uh, horrible what you're doing. It. No, no. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> how many are you seating? How many I'm are you ta- seating? Oh, well, the bigger the better. Like the cool. It, it wasn't the centerpiece, which you, you know, you really, uh, you really seem to go in and hone in on that. Uh, it's my gift. Trying to make. <laughs> it's what I do. I interview dorks about what they love. <laughs> uh, uh, but at, at the, like twenty, I can do it at one place outside of my house, like twenty-five people, and then I'll, I'll set that two days ahead. Let's, you know, so I can really look at it. I'll go to the bathroom in the middle of the night at like three in the morning, and then I'll go out and look at the table set. I'll be like, look at that fuck. And people come and they slop it up, and I wish they would fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done this, Janet Verney? Are you telling me that this is something? Uh, you're you're live. Look. Uh, uh, yeah, no, we were we were talking about this a little bit uh, before the podcast started, and, and we both said at the exact same time, right? You were explaining to me what you liked about it, and we both said at the exact same time. I know it's so calming. Calming, yeah. Something about There's something about the... it because we're broken in the same way, right? And, it's beautiful. Um, that sort of brokenness. Yeah. Have you ever you ever just do it for one? Is there anything sadder than a beautiful <laughs> setup for one? No, no. There's nothing. No, but. Yeah. You can make a bigger deal out of grilled cheese than we all do, and that's nice. <laughs> Seriously, grilled cheese is as good as lobster. It's not like, well, I get what you mean, you like it. No, it's as good as fucking lobster. It's just affordable, so no one makes a big deal about it. Make a fucking big deal about grilled cheese. Set the table. If you have cloth napkins, use them. Light a fucking candle and enjoy your fucking grilled cheese sandwich. I have an image of you coming in and pre- and putting down the grilled cheese under a silver dome oh. and then acting surprised when you yourself open yeah. it up like Ooh. is that what you mean Who did this is me? that what you mean i would like that hey do you Make know the name of that anything. silver dome do you have any idea what the name of that silver dome is i'm i'm I playing don't. a video game called hidden worlds by disney and it's a uh, find an object fight uh, cuz i'm a middle aged white lady and that's what we do we play a facebook <laughs> that- game where you find an object is that would you put that online, like if you were trying to like go on internet, you know, dim- internet dating? Online? Yeah, would mm-hmm. you go, what, what was it, how you describe H- hidden, yourself? Hidden, oh, oh, middle-aged white lady game? Yeah. Oh, yeah, why not? I, I, why you, wouldn't... you would do very well if you put on a dating thing that you like looking for hidden objects. <laughs> I think a lot of gentlemen would be like, I got a... Right? Unerect penises. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Really? It isn't as proactive uh, as like a Zelda game or what? What are you playing? Not, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider for the PlayStation Four. For the PS Four came out already Somebody's last doing year. Well. Somebody's I am doing, doing well. well. Thank you. By the way, when, when I asked Ron uh, what you said, I noticed I dropped the mic. I went just so I could catch up, and I missed in here. Ron on the mic answers me. Erect penises. <laughs> Uh, you know, you have to match if the other person's on the mic or not. You don't have to go. Uh, you know, if I go. Uh, who did you fuck? Like, you know, then it's like, all right, I'm done. Back to you. Back to me. All right. So, uh, uh, but uh, in, in the Hidden Worlds game, they named that, that silver dome thing that's put over food to keep it hot. Do you know what it's called? Mm. Thunderdome. It is not. It is not called. It is not a guessing game. I it's don't a, remember either. Does anyone know out there? Anybody got it? Oh, I'll put it in the notes. What, what do you think it's called? A lid. He got it. You're shrewd. You're shrewd. I, w- I you know, wish I you were right. I come to San Francisco, and I know about the smart people. I know about them. <laughs> it's not a lid, right? No. If it was a lid, how cool would you be? Everyone would be like, everyone else would be like, I fucking thought a lid. I didn't fucking... <laughs> Why didn't I say <laughs> lid? Yeah, it's true. It's true, though. All right, so. Uh... Sorry for the cursing, by the way. Yeah, that ain't right. So uh, you like a a, a, a a cloth napkin over a paper napkin? Is that what I'm, in general? This is getting more embarrassing. 
Uh, no, no, it's no, a real question. I always question. thought rich people. I don't really give a shit about cloth napkins, except I use them because rich. I, when I was growing up, there was this family that lived across the street from me, and they were the Nalabotskis, and they were really rich. So whatever they did, I fucking tried to do, even a cheap version of it. Uh, like buying. Were they wasps? Were they wasps? No, I don't. They were Jewish. They were Jewish. They were, they were Jewish. Jewish wasps. Well, what is that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm making shit up at this point. I don't know. I'm but, from South Milwaukee. All we had were Poles and Germans. We didn't have any Jews. We didn't have any, we didn't even have any wasps. We just had working class, normal working class people normal. trying to affect change at a grassroots level. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for shaming all of us. <laughs> You people probably had your own rooms, god damn you. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I, had to, I shared a room with my brother, Corey, but then he got his own room because I was too clean, and it was driving him crazy. Oh, know? yeah? So he and got they to built share. on just to... No, they did oh. What are we, the Nalabotskis? <laughs> you should have We seen all know what house. that means. It was fucking unbelievable. All I wanted to do was be over at their house because it was so perfect and everything was in the right order. Mm -hmm. Like, their dad would come home and yell at Albert, my friend, Albert, why do you leave the hose unwound? I tell you never. And Albert would be like, my dad's fucking crazy. Like, it's over the hose. And I would think, no, your dad's fucking right. Wind the fucking hose back up. I'm over here because I like it wound. I got it unwound at my fucking house. <laughs> Their driveway was perfect. When it snowed, like, the, they would plow it, like, perfectly. You know, ours was slush and shit everywhere. It was embarrassing. I think, I think we've just discovered that you're a never child. Like, was, you were never a child. Well, yeah, I, I used my bar mitzvah. I was. Well, <laughs> you might I, be the kid. You might be the guy that, as you get older, is more a, a child today. Because now you can appreciate. Good, God damn it! You're right. Glass that's why I, location. That's me. All right. No, but there's some. There's definite. Like I don't. Yeah. Like, when I say, don't try to put something together that doesn't go together. It's a. But when it does go together, it's an amazing thing to go. Oh yeah, that's definitely true. When I was a little kid, I needed things too orderly. It started very young, too, like orderly. Like, just I wanted it a fucking way. So off I went to the Nalabotsky's house. And, <laughs> right, because uh, that's where they were doing shit right. Yeah. My, yeah. my parents, I would choose my parents. If I had a choice, I love my parents. Sure. I would not want the Nalabotsky's parents, although they were nice, too, in case they're here. But, um, but oh, my parents listening. are fucking awesome. Like, they are great. But I just want the Nalabotsky's house in order. Right. So. Well, because my, my sister, uh, when she was nine, she was the only nine-year-old I knew who would peruse the uh, real estate pages. <laughs> <laughs> she is a much better child today than she ever was as a child. Yeah. She was like, and I, she would look at this. You remember they would come on newsprint and they'd be all gray and you couldn't tell what they looked like or fuck. And uh, so we, I was always like, oh, are you looking for a new house for us? And she's like, not for us. <laughs> Just me. And then she would kind of calm down a little bit, and she'd go, you could live with me. Aw, so sweet, sisters. Okay, so, uh, yeah, but that she was, she's a much better child today. How was your childhood, Ron? Was it uh, full of uh, PlayStation 2s? No, it was pretty... That, Pretty low ooh, that key. makes me seem younger. Thank it you. It does make you seem younger, sure. No, I wanted I, a Sega Genesis is all I wanted for my birthday in Streets of Rage 2. Right. Uh, <laughs> but my mom wanted to overdo it, and so she wanted to buy a little TV for my room. But she bought it off just some guy off the street, so I just got a box of bricks for my birthday instead. <laughs> she didn't check it? She didn't check it. Oh. That is a trusting She mom. didn't check it until I got to see it. So that was the worst part. That is the worst part. <laughs> that feels like a bad episode of the Waltons. Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw that one where the doll was broken. No. Anyway, it's a cheerful Waltons episode. You've probably seen it on YouTube. <laughs> Any <laughs> the worst. So what'd she do? Did she try to fix it? No, she just kind of let it go. It was a bad birthday. It was like, shit. It was the worst. I thought that these had fallen off a truck somewhere. But that's why I buy myself PlayStation 4s now. That's right, because you deserve it. I do deserve it. <laughs> I work hard. But I had friends like that, too, but they didn't. They just had, like, the entire Ghostbusters toy collection and would get wrestling pay-per-views every month, and so I'd always want to go over to their house, and they had a mini fridge with Toblerones. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's great. Everybody has that stuff. Your certain stuff you know everyone else has, but stuff like this, I'm like, other people fucking give it. It was the weirdest things. I was obsessed with circle driveways. Like and now I look back at I was I go, I think I was fifteen. My mom goes, Todd, you were ten. 
and you would stare at the neighbor's circle driveway. I was like, how the fuck can I do this to our house? Oh, yeah. And I asked them one day if it costs extra, because I thought, I didn't know. Like, now I get that's stupid. Of course it's extra. Then I thought, maybe my parents don't fucking get it. Like, they, like I thought I'd ask my neighbor, and I did. I go, was that extra? And uh, they go, yeah. Well, they didn't, I don't remember how they answered me, but they didn't say yes or no. But, like, I thought maybe they'd say no, and I'd go home and tell my parents, yeah, we should have gotten a fucking circle driveway, you know. You already didn't turn the garage, and that makes us look poor, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, circle driveways will dress up an otherwise shitty house. Yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll jazz it up. What We're, do you put in the middle, like a centerpiece? Le- you know, some... <laughs> <laughs> Touché, Janet Varney, ladies and gentlemen. I put a, a, a wine glass with a tulip. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's my cheap, that's a cheap way to decorate it. You put some shrubs in there. You know, a tree maybe, and then some shrubs around the bottom. Look, and look. the richer you are, the nicer it is. It could have, like, cobblestone. You're fountain like, could have a fountain. You could have a fountain. How about different colored cobblestone? You know those people who have different colored pebbles? And you're like, Jesus, God. Where did they get the different co- colored pe- pebbles for their walkways? You like th- that? That was Yeah, except for that. It doesn't make any sense in Wisconsin because you got a shovel. You don't want loose pebbles. <laughs> you know what it could be you're like? telling. This is a real specific thing to dork out on for a yeah, second. Yeah. You know what it could be like is the, the floors in Pinkberry. Don't you love those floors? I've, I've Aren't sh- they all kind of the same? They're I've like, only been to one they're like, area. Uh, epoxy, tiny colored pebbles. Oh, like little are tiny they mosaics? Pebbles. Do they have no, a mosaic like a, floor? No, no, there's nothing. There's that no pattern be- to it. Oh, there's no pattern. That I've been able to figure out after hours of staring at it. <laughs> uh, the love of no, pink but it is like a cool, it's just a cool flooring that you don't yeah. see very often. And every time I would go in there back when everyone was going yeah, to yeah. Pinkberry all the time, which yeah, I haven't yeah. been in one like five years. Maybe no, they can't afford those floors, and they stripped them out, and that's why you guys don't. And now it's just black, about. lacquered yeah. floors. No, it's um, no, I like the idea of any number of things, but what do I really like? I like um, I wanted to ask you about about the the top of this building, oh, yeah. which has a live. It's there's no food allowed up there. No food. You can you can bring your diet Pepsi, uh, because it's open to the sky, and no bird will swoop down and steal your chalupa. But they don't want you to bring your weird food that are going to hurt the ecosystem. There's a yeah. live um, plant yeah. thing. What's up yeah. there? It's like, uh, <laughs> I said I wanted to Somebody... dork out on this. I don't even know. <laughs> it's a living uh, plant, plant, plant roof. It's a plant roof, right? Like poison ivy from Batman. Like poison ivy. It's Ooh, it's alive. Like it's a lady poison. plant roof. Yeah. Ron. I'm into it. Right, right. <laughs> There's, she's got, she, her boobs are made out of grass and, uh, it's all hilly. And what? Eco, anyway. Eco roof. Eco domed roof. No, it's the living Eco roof because I thought it said roof. living room. And then it said living roof. And that was, I think, that was on purpose. I think they were going for a little pun there. I think you're probably right. <laughs> it's good writing. It's good writing, <laughs> California Academy of Sciences. Uh, so, yeah. And then, and then there's also a plant. And there's telescopes up there. So if you want to, uh, you know, take your, take your pot card and, uh, and hit the roof, uh, you can go look at the stars and wonder if there's people up there. That sounds like it would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. That is fun. That's good times. I said that sounds like it would be fun. Yeah, you might want to say it into the mic. Okay, so um, what's what up? Other, what hello, other, hello, hello. What other? Uh, but you like you like all kinds of museums and well, stuff I do. like that. I mean, I think I I do enjoy. Uh, I mean, listen, nobody's surprised to hear we all love the Natural History Museum in New York, right? And I'm talking pre the fantastic Tom Lennon movie. But uh, old school shit. Shout out to Tom Lennon and Boom Ben Grant. Uh, have, do you, you know the? I just saw the statue in front of it. It could not be more obnoxious, isn't it? Teddy Roosevelt with a couple of Nubians thanking him, oh, like grabbing his. Right. It's a. It's I a beautiful. Right. It's a nice look. It's yeah. really racially yeah. sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> Super racially sensitive. Yeah. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, one of the guys who helped out the Nubian slaves. <laughs> of all the many people who did. Right, he's, oh, he's on a horse, and then there's these two dudes that are just like, you're the best yeah. down below. Yeah. And you just want to go, that wasn't the look on their face. Yeah. It was, hey, you why don't you they... give me a ride? Yeah. <laughs> you was... think they saw him as a god? <laughs> I did not. I agree. <laughs> they did not. But Now, what's in that? But I've never been in the Natural History Museum. I like the building. Oh, it's a good-looking so cool. building. Is it? What's in it? 
Uh, well, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's, there's a little bit of what you see down here in the, the African Hall of Mammals. Uh, oh, taxidermy. Here. There's some taxidermy. Okay. I, I have to talk myself through the idea that these animals die naturally and never Sure. Fine and and then friends. everyone was like, let's stuff them with paper or sure, whatever sure. shoes. But yeah. this is the thing is for me, <laughs> old shoes. They're old all, shoes. That's where shoes, shoes go. Do you know how hard it is to finesse old shoes to be the shape of an animal? It's right. Very, hard. <laughs> very difficult to return them to their natural form. And right, that's cases, where shoes came from. That's right. The inside of a wild giraffe. That's right. <laughs> uh, but I love dioramas. Oh, do you love a so diorama? I, in, uh, small, the smaller the better, quite frankly. But if they're life size, I'll accept them. Uh, yeah, because Natural love... History Museum, it's all diorama. Yeah, it's yeah, just one giant fan. diorama after another. Big fan. What do you think I need to know? What's a diorama? What's a diorama? Oh, oh. Tell them. I used to it's, never ask. I used to just go, oh, yeah. Oh, you're strong enough in your senses. If, if I want to know, so do 10 of you people in the audience. You are correct. Everyone gets to get away with it. Then when she tells yeah. them, she'll be like, oh, he doesn't know that, but you didn't know it either. Anybody <laughs> willing to admit? Because I'll go one by one and ask you what it means, and I'll get to you. <laughs> and I'll do it. I'll have it in my ears, so I'm not stupid. I'll be will. one step ahead. It's a real clock eater, people. people. Yeah, what is a die? Uh, whatever it is, uh, whatever you, know, you so said. So if you go downstairs, you're in the Natural History Museum. You see uh, the stuffed animal, and then there's some shrubs, uh, some real life, real time shrubs, and then uh, behind that is like the sort of painted backdrop that gives it scope and makes it seem like it's Depth. you know nice landscape. It's a scene. Portrait kind of a situation. So you can have a very complex one like these ones that we see downstairs, or you could just be like a kid who makes one for a class project where you just like yeah shoe just box. cut out some exactly yeah, yeah. shoe box look at you janet you're it's very good core. and patient explaining things i like your style yeah <laughs> without being condescending no i was being serious actually yeah dead because you did it like in a very nice way you know you weren't well i guess you wouldn't do it any other way you're not going to be like uh you know when you walked in so <laughs> i was may have given you credit unnecessarily oh, but, I, well. but it was nice i mean i give it back to you fuck it how hard I mean, is it I to give some i credit? really need it todd i really thank you I here's, really need here's you my mean it Here's my side question, Janet Varney. Uh, do you enjoy a dollhouse? Yes, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, because that's a, essentially a dollhouse is a diorama, right? Yeah, you set I, up. when I first moved here. Oh, uh oh, off my. <laughs> They've broken off. We off a like, discussion that was like half on, half off. But... Girls talking about a dollhouse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I did have a dollhouse. Uh, and then when I came to San Francisco, when I first moved here, uh, when I was, I think, 18, uh, I got Thank two part time God. jobs. Okay. Uh, one was working at an all Australian import store. And as you do when you move to San Francisco. Ugh. And the other one was at a very uh, upscale uh, miniature store. Oh. That, listen, now I what can was work it out called? miniatures. It was called the Treasure House. Excellent. Oh. It was on Sutter in between uh, Mason and Powell, so super expensive real estate. And, then all, and so all the... All the rich, like the Swigs and the Gettys, all the people that, you know, when you're like wandering around in Pacific Heights going, who can afford this? Who lives here? How, like, how old money is old money? Right. All of those people who, who really don't have to work would come in and get like the miniature version of their painted lady Victorian or they would get like, and so wow. we had like, like a tiny, like a, you would actually probably really enjoy this no, because the table settings, Todd, <laughs> the tiny the mic, table Todd. settings, like Waterford Crystal it was in such demand that Waterford Crystal had hand-blown crystal goblets. Wait, tiny that ones? That were, like, to scale for a dollhouse. You could pay, like, $100 to have per, per goblet. So you could have, have a tiny a You could have a tiny setup. Your tiny, yeah. uh, you know what? I'm not table. even... I, I don't want to say I wouldn't want that just because I'd be embarrassed, but I would admit it if I did. But th that's the thing. It's like... Once you say you like something, then people think like you want to. Go oh, you will like this, yeah, and you don't. Yeah, like no, no. I'll give you an example. Like I like to have, I like to get the house dark and have a candle, a stick candles. You know what a tapered candle is? That's all I fucking buy. I buy boxes of those ten. I light one in the dining room. We sit around it like it's a fire. But then the word gets out. Oh, Todd likes candles. No, I fucking don't. I don't want <laughs> people buying me fucking candles, and it's very sweet when they do it. But I just fucking like the light from the candle. So I don't want like shitty sure. fucking candles all over the place. My dad told people. He Sorry, liked I didn't mean to yell at you. What if ten people have? Candles for me as a gift. shit all over the house. You people did? Are... Yeah, we got unicorn. My, the, my, the, 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 you, you tell somebody you like frogs. You tell oh, somebody yeah. you like unicorns. Oh, you do it. Yeah. You're screwed. You're Don't screwed. Don't ever do you it. Got, you yeah. got unicorn hats. People are bringing shit over to the house. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. But what do, what do you like, Ron? Just one quick okay. thing. What if, oh. I'm going to blow your mind, the tabletop centerpiece of your tabletop was a miniature table? Oh, table yeah. Tabletop. I want on that. on top of that was a tiny... Tiny tabletop. 
<laughs> He's going to cry. He's going to cry. It's so you know good. What? You don't have to answer. Take 24 hours. Okay. Think about whether you would like that. Get back to me. You're going to be here all week. He's going to be here all weekend at the festival. I'm thinking about it. With a tiny grilled cheese, a tiny lid. The tiniest grilled cheese with a lid? domed lid. Oh. Oh. I wish I could remember it's the name little, of that thing. It's too much work. Man. Lid. Um, Can I say something? Please. Dark panel. <laughs> well, I told him not. To, uh, the dollhouse thing, at first you think like, that's, uh, it's basically may pretend. So the only thing I can get close to that, which I thought I was older in a lot of these stories, but my brothers and my parents always tell me. So I knew I was in second grade, so they're probably right. I was seven or eight. Maybe I was in third grade. So that we get close to playing. Uh, please turn your phone off, ma'am. This story, it's like a play. Oh, yeah. This you're is, right. Oh, you're on task. This is, this is Caitlin, oh. and she's doing some research for us. Ah, uh, shit. Okay. Ka- Caitlin, so, yeah, uh, research is I would, Caitlin. When, when they were cutting our lawn, you know, like when they were cutting yeah. it, cleaning up the yard, I would go outside with pretzel sticks and act like they were cigarettes and act like I was telling everybody what to do. So I'd be like, <laughs> picture me. My head was the same size, and I'd walk around. I, I didn't want... I was sane enough to know that I couldn't let them see me doing it. I look crazy. I remember thinking that, but I would be like, put that up there. Because <laughs> there was this guy, Komar, who was the boss, and he would always be telling people, let's get that done, put that up on the truck. And I was like, that's the, I want to be that guy. You know, I don't want to be digging the holes, but I want to be the guy that's like, let's go, let's put those in there. We got all the shrubs to play. You're a never child. Yeah, this now you're thing. right. We've created a thing together Can I tell you, here in this room. I swear to God, I never looked at it from that perspective because I had a happy childhood, but I was uh, perplexed a lot. But um, <laughs> you were perplexed. I got a letter from somebody. I go, I never get emails from people I used to know. And we lived on this place, Kilburn Road. And I, but I never get letters from anywhere. But like a week ago, I got a letter from somebody. They go, I used to live on Kilburn Road. I'm like the Glicksteins. I fucking remember them. So he goes, he writes a letter. It was really nice. And then he goes, I got to be honest. Uh, I haven't seen you since you were little, but you were such a serious child. I'm like, was I? But then you tell me this. I might have been. Who knows what I was doing at Kilburn Road? I might have been put a fake badge walking around ticketing people parking in the, <laughs> illegally in the street. I know I don't look like a cop because I'm seven, but... <laughs> yeah, and I, and I was very obsessed with doing it right. Like, I remember the neighbor guy who used to cut their lawn, he didn't have his name on his truck. So I remember telling him, I'm like, you got to put your name on your truck. Because that looks professional. And then he did it. I remember him calling me. He goes, Todd, come on down here. But he did it so shitty. And, I'm, like, he took spray paint. He went, psh, psh, psh. And I remember thinking, fucking no. Now I'm Molly Cop. I'm like, oh, it looks really good. I'm lying. And I'm seven. And I'm right. Yeah. And I'm right. In hindsight, I was like, that's why you don't underestimate the intelligence of kids. We always hear that. But we go, yeah, you don't do it because it's mean. No, because you can look like a fucking idiot. Here I was, this guy. Oh, look at that. The kid will like anything I do. No, I won't. That looks shitty. And that's not going to get you more work. And I also told you to put your tools through a two-by-four with holes in them behind your window in the pickup truck. And you haven't fucking done that. So you really want to do this? Because I fucking get it, and I'm seven. Let's fucking pick it up. <laughs> While none of this is surprising to me, it's all Fascinating. delightful. It is yeah. the best. Uh, wow, it's stories like this that really make me want to ask Ron Funches what he's thinking. <laughs> what are you thinking, Ron Funches? I was just thinking that all of Todd's neighbors had like sitcom neighbors' names. Like they, were, <laughs> like I, like I wouldn't be surprised if like ten years from now we were like Todd would just make all that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> His whole history was made up. That's, That's what I was thinking. That's what you were thinking about. Mm-hmm. Awesome, great. Yeah, that's all I got, too. <laughs> it's, I like the idea. The thing about the dioramas, though, is um, so there's there's your natural history museums, and then there's, like, aquariums, and there's, do you, do you like an animal event? Like a zoo? Like a zoo, or a, zoo a, or a like the Monterey? Or just a mauling? Have a you mauling? been to the Monterey Bay uh, I do, uh, the Monterey. squid place? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a fish. It's a fishery, is it not? Wait, like a like an aquarium? It's an aquarium. That's the word I was looking for. The old <laughs> word squid Smith. place. The old squid place. There were an aquarium that was devoted entirely, entirely to, to squid. squid. Oh, they they would take yeah. over the world. They're very smart. They're not as smart yeah. as octopuses. And I found out that the plural of octopus is octopuses. Kate, uh, did you find out the name of the item? Moose is meeson. A cloche. It's a cloche of, of, with an e on the end. Of that's right. what it is. Yeah. It's not a lid. It be it's still a cloche, sir. Be- yeah, 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 yeah. Could be clear. Whack. Sure, sure. All right, good to know. Good well to done. know. Now I don't well have done. to go in the Thank notes. You. Good for me. Yeah. All right, so uh, what do you uh, think of an I aquarium? Lo- I do love an aquarium. Now, why do you like an aquarium? Um, no, you said you didn't like a zoo, but you like an aquarium. I know. I guess I have less respect for fish. 
<laughs> I don't know because I do get depressed at zoos, but in, at aqua- I mean, listen, I don't in any way support like a sea world. I don't want to see. Uh, I don't want to see a killer whale in captivity, in particular. Do you want to swim with the dolphins, though? No, not at all. I, I like never want to swim with the dolphin. I, should, I, I just don't think belong. That they're busy. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't want to get in their business. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No. I was at the Long Beach Aquarium yesterday, and you could pet the sharks, and you could pet the jellyfish, and I was like, what if a giant fucking hand came down out of the sky and went, you're great. Yeah. And uh, I would like, I don't want to pet any animal that is being, that's, they're, you're, lay balloon. That's actually all I would really want. I was going to say. <laughs> It's like every now and then a hand came out of the sky and was like, you're, you're doing, doing great. Right. That's what many people spend their lives praying for, Jackie. Some sign. That's, that's some one thing. <laughs> that's, that the Lord is up there. <laughs> and, well, maybe that's... But what about the... But, but like, for you, are you talking about at the Long the Beach two Aquarium, fingers. The two fingers. How you can fingers. touch the, the, the bat rays? Because yeah. I've... I've You've done it. Just that I want to believe that they like being petted because because at the aquarium they're like they're the puppies of the sea. They're the puppies of the sea. (laughs) They They like it. They like they they come up to you and they kind of bump up against your hand and then you can feed them and they have okay. Well, I mean that's I mean no no that's fine. I mean if other people want to do it, I'm all for it and it seems fine. And then but the entire time I spent in the bathroom, it was just one lady after another telling her little kid, "Use the Purell. Don't touch that. Keep your hands in your pockets." And you're like, "Oh, is there germ?" I'm building an immune system. Let's just fucking do this. Yeah. I was like, let your kid have, I mean, it's given me the flu every time I talk to it. <laughs> and it being a child, so sorry. <laughs> every time I talk to your toddler, it's giving me some, they're little vectors of disease. Let them take it back. No? All right. I got four people without kids going, yeah, let's do this. Everyone else is like, you're a monster. <laughs> you're no a hand monster. is ever going to pat you. No That's hand right. is no ever going to come, come down out of the from sky. the sky. I love you. Yeah. No, I just, I just have a th- I have many unsubstantiated theories about animals. And one of them is that, you know how there's, there's that part of the ocean that they were like, no, no one could ever live down there. No one could ever live down there. No, those are animals that chose not to evolve because they don't want to hang out with us. Yeah. <laughs> That's my theory. They're just like, Whenever I, because I went scuba diving once, and they took us uh, scuba diving. I went idiot scuba diving, where you got a real scuba diver holding on to you. Uh, and so you breathe underwater with a tank and stuff, but they're just like, if you look like you're going to lose your shit, you just, they take you right back up. But oh, um, God, I would lose my shit. I wouldn't even make it that far. It was a hundred bucks. I didn't know. I don't know if I'd do it again. But it was, it was fun. I mean, I was, you know how you want to do things. Like if everybody was jumping out of a plane, I'd be like, okay, once. Once with the plane. No? I, I'm afraid to do anything. You? Yeah, would you, Ron? Not, not, I mean, I go out of the house, and you would not know it if I didn't tell you. It's not like I'm living in fear. But uh, I don't want to do, like, anything that could break my leg. I just don't want to fucking break my leg. So it's skiing. <laughs> forget it. I don't want to ski. Uh, I, don't I don't accelerate well. I don't That's do true. Anything. I don't, like I don't put lakes. anything on my feet that make me go faster. But is it because you get swept up in other people's excitement or is yes. it because you feel you might? And is that true for you? No, not at all. I go the other way with it all the time. I was like, oh, you guys all into that? It's probably fucking dumb then. <laughs> you are wise. You are like the wise man who sits and goes, nope, I'm not dropping uh-uh. out of a fucking plane. Uh-uh. But I will say that I'm all right. I don't want to be one of those people also that uh, bo- uh, other people, like, what's there? I get it comedically, like when Howard Stern used to say, stay home, stop fucking doing shit. That's funny. But the truth is, like when someone would be <laughs> on the God top of a mountain me. and they would get lost in the rescue team, you go, good, stop fucking mountain. Leave them in there. They have to, they have to learn their lesson. But... Uh, but I, but I, I'm all right with other people doing things. It's not like I would go, why do people want to ski? Well, cause they want to ski. I understand it. There's things I don't want to do. Other people want to do. And I totally respect that. But I just wish it worked the other way around. It's hard to tell people you don't want to fucking do anything, but you're fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you're going to be in Washington, D.C. You got to go fucking, blah, 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 blah. I don't fucking want to. You go do it. <laughs> and y- you come back and see who's happier. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'll be happy. And if you go, oh, well, those two people that went are happy, good, then we're both fucking happy. But more people will go, oh, it was hot, it was sticky, we had to wait in line. I didn't, I laid in bed. <laughs> I like it. I like I, I've wanted to take uh, skateboarding lessons recently, and uh, I was. <laughs> Why? <laughs> 
I know this. Stuff. <laughs> I just said that I don't accelerate well, but I'm just saying that I would like to skateboard. I once, I used to play 360. I used to play, it was a great game. And, uh, but the, uh, um, but I, I was mentioning to, uh, to my loved one and he said, not this life, not this life. Next time. He said, you can't take skateboarding lessons because you're going to break everything. And uh, I did once break my wrist uh, jumping on a skateboard uh, without any training, though. Like, if I had had training, maybe I would have been okay. I just really want to see you in full knee pads and elbow pads. Sweet. You could do it. I, on a you, you should see a picture of me with a rocket launcher. I got one. Ooh. Yeah. That's why I went to Iraq. I went to Iraq because everybody was like, you should, you're against the war, but have you ever been to Iraq? And I was like... I'll go to fucking Iraq. Let's do this. And so I went to Iraq because then I then I could have had a better leg to stand on. But um, I'm not saying I'm bright, and I'm not saying that you should necessarily. Uh, you might want to live a little more defensively than I do. Uh, but uh, but the th- but it's you know, don't you want to do stuff? I Is do. there something you want to do but you're scared to do it? Always, uh, drive over that damn fucking bridge. Have you ever those suspension bridge you people have? All I do is oh, eat the yeah. car in front of me. That's all I yeah. do. I just eat the, I get in the middle lane and eat the car in front of me because, uh, I, I think I'm gonna jump. I always think I'm gonna d- drive the car over the edge of the, <laughs> um, it's unwanted thought syndrome and everyone has it. It's not just me. <laughs> yeah, it's like when somebody, you're talking about like when somebody walks in front of your car at the red light and you just think, you know. You know. No, I never do that, but I mean, I have other ones. Oh. You can have that one. So yours is about hurting others, but yours is about hurting yeah, yourself. Yeah, jumping off the edge mm. of a building. Oh, I don't want to know what you're scared of that you want to do. Edit that out, You want to do anything, you too? Uh, I don't want to do anything I'm scared of. Well, I guess I like, I guess I would like to not be afraid to go scuba diving, but I, I do feel like I would panic about the breathing. Right. Uh. Well, it's weird to panic under, uh, to breathe underwater, but it, they, they have you sit there for a minute and you, you, and you go, this is unnatural. This is unnatural. This is unnatural. I just take and then a deep you're like, okay, just thinking about it. Yeah. So, but eventually you get over it and then you go scuba diving and then you come back and go, well, that's fine. I don't need to do that again. But other people get super addicted to it. They love it. Who likes scuba diving here? Oh, there's a, oh, there's a couple of people. There we that's go. Not, people. There's not that many people. I feel okay. That's all right. I'm there's some, it. there's some scuba diving. Yeah. Was it more it's pretty money? Because to me, if you were going to do it, the best way to do it would be what you just said. That way you have somebody there with you. Mm-hmm. Takes a, sands a little bit of the nervousness off a little bit. I still wouldn't do it, but that's the best way if I was going. Like, if you told me that I could take some sort of Harry Potter juice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like they do in the movie. Oh, I got. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, I just have gills for a while. Oh, right. And I felt like I could belong. I felt more like I belong. If you it could take feels that. feels so much like you're, like, if you have to put on that much and change that it much. It is unnatural. I guess there is part of me. I appreciate that it exists and it's possible, but I think there is part of me that's like, I don't, uh. I don't want. I don't want to impose. I flew here though, and we're not yeah, supposed to fly, sure, right? We sure. get in those tubes that go up in the sky. Yeah, yeah. Right. Those things are heavy. That does not natural. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What do you want to do, Ron Funches, that you don't want to do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I want to be in like a musical, like. <laughs> Here's, well, we've got a surprise for you because, like, what <laughs> drops away, <laughs> music starts playing, dancers come in. Which, what, you. What's your favorite musical that you might think that you'd be good in? Hairspray? Maybe Hairspray. I don't know many musicals. Grease? But Would I you just, play? I want you to be Rizzo. I would like to be in Grease. Grease always had a bad place in my heart because was, I was a teenager in Oregon and all the white girls I was into loved Grease and we'd watch it and I'd just be like, oh, if I was in this movie, it would be a really bad time for me. <laughs> Not if you were Kanicki. If they would have can't, because Kanicki had a lot to offer a girl. <laughs> But I just want to, I want to, I don't think I can dance well nor sing, but it's something that tells me, hey, you should do it. You could do it. I, you could, you could do like a Philip Glass kind of musical where you write your own thing and then go, fuck you, you don't get it. Well, okay. Can I tell you something? <laughs> can I tell you something? Mm. I want to be in a musical too. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a little bit of my ability. I didn't give all of it. Because like, <laughs> you'd be like, oh, he's just showing off. I held about, that was about three out of five. I, three out of ten. Oh, uh, that's right. I want to be in a musical too. I want to be in a musical too. 
I want to be in a musical too. Blackout. That's our fucking show. Look what we just did in three seconds. I think this think is going to work gonna out. <laughs> I do. I, I, I've been in many a musical. You're not really. Out. You're not missing out on that. Much. No, I don't really want to be in a musical. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but no, I, gonna, no, do I? No, 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 I wouldn't want to do. It's we're not something I, if, I, if they called me up and it was a lot of money, I wouldn't say no. But I wouldn't want to like. I'm not going to go after it. <laughs> 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 That's normal. Why did you? What? No, I w- what? All right. Is that wrong? What, what I said. What musicals have you been in, Janet? Uh-huh. In high school, were you in musicals? Did you do it? I was in Greece. <laughs> Yay! I can see that. I wanted to be Rizzo, but they made me play Sandy because... Mm-hmm. Blonde. I got blonde hair and blue eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sandy. Yeah. Sure. Well, Sandy. That's the closest I can get. <laughs> That's from watching other people do it 20 years ago. Oh, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody Sandy. seen Chess? No, but that just came up on uh, my podcast. Somebody was talking about chess. Probably me on your podcast. Let's I, talk yeah. about everybody's podcasts yeah. for a second. Hey, hey, Janet, this is a hell of a segue. Uh, Janet Varney has a uh, the JV podcast, right? The JV Club, you've done it. JV Club, I did it. it. We talked about, and then uh, Janet's going to come on and just in, exclusively talk about uh, different uh, museums. I say, I, I certainly could. Well, you could. We got a long list of things. I we got a long list of things <laughs> we're going to work down. And then uh, JV Club, that's on the Nerdist Right Network. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yep. Dork yep. Horse is on the All Things Comedy Podcast yep. Network. How about you, Fonchi? You got a you got a pod? No, no. I'm well, just mostly chilling at home. Chilling, and then being on TV shows, Stay and then being tuned. on a couple of TV shows. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you tell the American public what TV shows you're on? Uh, <laughs> Plural. Uh, <laughs> well, I was on this army show called Enlisted on Fox. And I'm on the show on NBC coming out with Chris D'Elia called Undateable. Yeah. And I'm on the Kroll show with Nick Kroll. Yeah, yeah. And then I started writing for the Eric Andre show. I'm come busy. On. You're working. <laughs> You're working. <laughs> but these guys come down from Portland. It takes them days to find work. It's so hard. <laughs> these guys come to L.A. from Portland, and then all of a sudden, they just can't find any work. Yeah. <laughs> you and Ian Carmel, man. Yeah. We're, I think he was there for about seven or eight minutes, was yeah. it? No, he, he literally was there lately? for two days. I mean, I was happy with my progress, and then he got there and was like, well, I write for Chelsea lately now. <laughs> right. Like two Ian days Carmel, later. Ian Carmel, very funny uh, Portland comic, comic as well. And everybody, uh, and then Todd Glass. And he's my I'll roommate. be headlining at the Improv in Rancho. Show Cucamonga. I wanted to give that a little shout out. That's um, a cockroach. I have a book coming out. You got a book with coming Simon out? and Schuster in May, and then uh, is it what called else? Simon and Schuster? I'm, it's called. Uh, well, there's a few names that are up for debate right now, but it's, uh, a, it's about yes, it's all about table settings. It's a. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's by you, Todd Glass. Yes, it and is. And if by people me. go to toddglass.com, they would probably find out many things. In about May. It. In May. Oh, no, they could do it tonight if they wanted. I meant right, the book got comes out. for some free time. And the, but, bo- the yeah. book's called, uh, no, I don't have to, t- uh, but that's it. And then the, the uh, podcast voted number one by the Podcasters Association of America. I had a jingle made. I think that means it's official. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the book? What's, what the, the book, book is, book? Um, it, it's about, you know, Tell basically doing novel. comedy for 30 years. And yeah. it, a lot of it is, uh, you know, after I came out of Mark Maron, sort of that side of, you know, yeah, that yeah. plate spinning that Big had to reveal. go on in my Big life. reveal. Yeah, but it's no, it's, it's just, it's, it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of both. I want to call it, but I'm fighting for it right now. If I could only meet a girl with cancer and other stupid things I said to stay in the closet. And uh, <laughs> thank you. That's that explains great... itself. And, I, and I'm fighting with them over that because anybody, I wouldn't do that joke unless someone with cancer could go, no, that has nothing to do with making fun of cancer. That makes fun of a 20-year-old that wanted to stay in the closet so bad that he would make up a story to go, if I could only meet a girl with cancer. That was my plan. And I thought that would be a great plan. You know, it'd be like, then I'd overdo it probably, you know, at parties. <laughs> I never got over Karen. Why? <laughs> you know, but I'd always leave early. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but they don't want to call it that because they feel it would be offensive to people with cancer. I said, what about uh, uh, if I could only meet a girl with terminal disease? Thinking that would sand the edges off of it, a term I've used before tonight in case you're keeping track. Uh, that was when the... Uh, That's, the so, but they want why to call... Do they wa- why do they want to make I don't it know. a fucking Ken doll? They want to Just call do the joke, man. The Todd Glass situation, which is boring. Fine, but whatever, man. I want to call it Glass House. I like it. Glass Houses, yeah. Oh, look, Janet... <laughs> Mm, yeah, like that got, yeah. <laughs> Janet goes, mm. 
Mm. Or the whole audience nice. reacted like, nice. yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> So and I had to get over and by the way I'm very proud of myself because even though I did it on the show uh, it's hard for me to talk about and my friends are going well what are you going to do in your book tour you don't even want to talk about it I go I'll talk about it you know like about the idea of it but talking about me saying oh after you know that's very hard so I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do but this is good practice because I sort of mentioned it a little bit so uh, you know what I mean it's like very vague oh, you know after I was on the Mark Maron show people are like what the fuck does that mean um, I well, think you most people know after my plate setting stories anything. you know what You're I mean Todd Glass you're not defined by any part of you you know what that's what I've been telling Janet but she says it's the opposite what? You yeah, said, man. you said before we came out here, you What's said, right now? I'm kidding. You were wow. defined by your episode of the I Mark Maron Show, which is not called the Mark Maron Show. I think it's called, uh, I wish I could meet a girl with cancer. I think Thank he you. took your name. <laughs> yeah, so. so, all right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's people plugging things. And, uh, <laughs> you guys can go to familypetancestry.com for my website. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Find out if your cat was on the Mayflower, you bastards. Find out. Is your dog of the American Revolution? Is it? Is it? A D-A-R? That's what you got. All right. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I like the idea. See, here's the thing. When, when you do the dork forest in dork panel mode, uh, you just gotta jump in. I just figured that it would all be, so we've been, we've been plugging along. We've been, t- we've been touching base on some dorkdoms. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna have each of you back on and you're gonna get to hold forth. Longer about the thing that you enjoy. Tablecloths, linen, cotton. Weigh in, Todd Glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never even you know, finished your funches. whether you use cloth napkins. Oh, well, I, 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 I still rate, use them. Or I you? never bought them, but the way I first started using them when I was at a hotel and I was walking to my room, if there were cloth napkins on the like the to go tray, the, the table tray, I would start like stealing the ones they didn't use. Sure. But then I realized they don't they're, they're, they have this, they don't wipe sweat. Like if you're sweating, I sweat a lot, so I need something. To, uh, nap, oh, cloth napkins. Cold. Some they don't take water. Like the water just rolls around your face. It's like they have a whatever they're made out of. They're made out of like shit you would make a parachute out of. You're like, oh, let me wipe, let me smear the food around my face. No absorption whatsoever. So all the not like a like a towel napkin. Well, I st- I got rid of all the ones I stole, and then since have uh, gotten ones that absorb. Let me tell you something. My brother, my brother Phil, it would be a nightmare. They he's got four children, and when he was he'd set the table, they would share one towel. They, he didn't have napkins. He said we ran out of napkins. Just we could share this towel. You know what? And I was I, like, you're foul. You're a foul human being. <laughs> <laughs> but he's my brother, so I can say that. Phil Cation. I've half done that. Don't eat with him. I remember being like with my brothers when we would get a pizza, but we couldn't find any napkins. <laughs> so we would like go get a towel. And like I would sort of take my corner. My brother would be like, toss that over here. And he'd be like, take the corner. So, but okay. we were also, you know, young. You know, we weren't like, how old's right. your brother? He's in his 40s. He's a disgusting pig. He's a pig of a... <laughs> I was two at the time. Yes, exactly. Two, and then you had your pretzels, and you were telling people yeah. what the fuck to do. Yeah, bossy uh. magoo. All right. So, uh, um, yeah. So, Funchy, you'll come on. Mm-hmm. You'll get to eventually talk about the PlayStation Four. Does it play? Uh, does it play the the Blu-ray as well? It does, but not 3D Blu-rays, which was disappointing to me. So, it's a it's failure limited. of technology, right? Well, there. I feel like they're going to add things in later. That's what they're all about: is patching in new firmware. But I want to ask questions about Legend of Korra to Jada. Oh, you you got a question for Legend of Korra? Mm-hmm. I Let's do, do it. have a couple questions because I've watched the two book series so far, and it seems like every time it's like, "Hey, this guy's going to come in, and you know he's full of shit." But you go with him instead of like Tenzin, who's always supported you, but like every time. And I'm like, why didn't you learn the first time that this other guy's gonna be full of shit? And, but it's like, okay, you a teenage girl. So I get that part of it. But then also it's like Mako's full of shit. He's always jumping back and forth between you and Asani and like Bolin's right there. And he's sweet and nice and he's so funny and he works in movers and it's like, why don't you like bowling? Like, he's the guy, is it like, because he's just too sweet and nice and up front? Like, what do guys like me and bowling? I mean, just bowling. Uh, <laughs> have to do. We're the ones with TV shows. Why can't we get the girl? So that's my question. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> so what's the question, <laughs> Janet? You, you're everything you're saying is how I feel <laughs> about her. For Th- sure. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's super. You know, I go to all these conventions and I always get asked, like, who would you pick between and, Mako and Bolin? Yeah, of, the, of course, Bolin. Like, yeah. there's no. He's not just even a, a puppy, and he likes loves animals. I know, and he's he, wonderful. Like, he's the best. And then Mako's like, "Oh, we're broken up." So like two days later, I'm gonna go get with Asani while you're like dead in the spirit world. That's I fucked know. up. <laughs> I know. It's not cool. <laughs> It's not cool at all. And then you're back and you're like, oh, I have amnesia. I don't remember us breaking up. And so then he like just starts back with you in front of his old girl. like, And she's rich. So he's just like fucking up all the way around. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. The answer is yes. (laughs) Yeah, I knew these were astute observations. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have any questions of your own character? Do you have any questions you'd like to ask yourself? <laughs> you a little inner you, monologue you, that you'd you like co- to? No, yeah. I just covered it. All right, it's, uh, it's 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 rough stuff. It is hard. Get out. <laughs> no, um, so no, they're just leaving. Oh. <laughs> it's fine. No, whatever anybody Jimmy goes to like the to next make thing. It seem like yeah, it's I like her to, choice. To, it's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. My choice. <laughs> The 120 people that are in here, not enough. Yeah. Now those people need to get the fuck out. I got anyway. some questions for the audience. Is that you got, okay? Okay. Yeah. And then if the audience has any questions, because we're coming on it. We're coming on the hour. So it goes uh, yeah. quick. No, I don't really. It always goes quick. They seem so, nice, though. Until it stalls to a complete fucking stop. And I'm like, now what? <laughs> and uh, it's a good time. It's a podcast. Go. Ask the questions. Oh, the no. Audience. I was just teasing. No, I want you to know. Oh. Yeah. Um, where are you Rise guys from? Rise to the occasion. <laughs> you guys all from here? Did you all grow up here? All right. All right. To some extent, how do you deal with it? Is it true that rollback is is uh, is something that uh, that you all expect on a hill? Just because it's terrifying <laughs> to drive in your city, and I even with a with a an, and parking brake, sure. But I'm told that that if somebody gets right behind me on one of those tall hills, uh, it's their fucking problem if I bump them if they got too close to me. Okay, that's a go. That's a go on that. Okay. And then well, it should be like that. Well, it takes some of the pressure off of me because I'm constantly terrified I'm going to hurt somebody. And uh, people know that there's rollback. That's what I hear here. And, uh, and, I, and I went to one of your chicken emporiums today, and it was nice. <laughs> Where did you go? I went to something called rotisserie something. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Over on uh, Webster, Sutter. Webster. Su- oh. It was over in the Fancy Pants uh, Treasure uh, Miniature na- Neighborhood. Where where your miniature store was. Webster and Sutter. <laughs> I'll put it in the notes. It was called... Uh, it was called... Mar- it was not Boston Market. <laughs> <laughs> it was Ooh, not uh, Kentucky yes, Fried Chicken. Boston I believe market. I was burned. It was not a Boston Market. It was... Uh, they, uh, they only have organic, free-range chicken that chose to die. Uh, Mary's. Uh, chicken, and uh, it was oh. called rotisserie something. And that's not far from the, from the, the from the hotel. Area. That's in that area, yeah. right? Japan Town. Yeah. But it was not Japanese uh, chicken. It was uh, American, good good old American chicken <laughs> that had been smacked and then stuck at uh, yeah, good times. All right. <laughs> I travel a lot, people, and I'm always looking for the best rotisserie chicken. So if you know of a place. <laughs> Email me at Jackie at JackieCation.com. And, uh, and if anyone would like uh, uh, some green manna, I brought some uh, green manna. All right, from heaven. Uh, so does, is there anything... Uh, <laughs> fuck. Uh, is, what would you like to... What would you like to... Is there any closing comments about your dorkdom that people should go to your... They really should just email each of us specifically. Yeah, well, uh, let's see. Um, I want to someday curate a show of tiny art and call it Uncontrollable Diorama. Um, <laughs> but I feel like I know That's good a bunch of That's good artists writing. who do like really great small things. It wouldn't be cool to go into yeah. our show and like John Mattis' wife tiny little does uh, on the backs of bottle caps. She she does tiny art. Uh, I almost went out with a guy who drew a uh, little religious. Uh, uh, scenes with a microscope and a, and a magnifying glass. Exact reason you did not go out with him. It, totally exact reason. And he was going to be a priest, and my father introduced me to him. So a That's lot good. of reasons I didn't yeah, go out with that for guy. Sure, not a sure. fit. Tiny art. I, I liked that the tiny art was the best thing about him, quite honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to do next? 
What, what, I, what, <laughs> yeah. Well, are you going to start painting? What, what's left? The triple threat. I do think that you could sing, dance, and act. I just want to be in a, really, I want to be in a movie. I want to be in some type of comedy movie. Transformers 4? No. 5? Just something. It's going to happen like tomorrow. It could. You probably, yeah, yeah. And probably then I'll come to the one. next Right goal. now. You're not even going to have to audition. You're yeah. just going to show up. Oh, you guys have so much faith in me that I don't you? have. Dude, 2014, the year of Ron Funches, my friend. I'm oh, no, yeah. I don't question that Definitely. at all. Definitely. <laughs> I can tell. Maybe I shouldn't even say this, but I can always tell which guys, or, you know, guys, meaning guys or girls, like, are going to, like, I can tell right away. Sometimes I miss some, but when I say they are going to be successful, I'm always right. You know, you see somebody, you're like, oh, they're going to fucking, him, Yeah. I knew Rory Scovel, yeah. Ian Carmel, I'm like, maybe if they knew it, but maybe it wouldn't be good if they knew it, because then maybe that's what keeps them more, you know, I'm kidding around, you know, serious, it's okay. not going to happen. Thanks. <laughs> I know, that you thought, I'm going to prove you wrong, Todd. <laughs> well, you're not going to prove me wrong, okay, but, you know, okay, do it, do okay, what you got to do. Prove you Eat wrong. a stable job, and go back and get your high school equivalency, <laughs> For what? People used to tell me that when I was much younger. You'll get your... I go, what the fuck are you talking about? What do I need that for? Like, what, am I going to learn anything I don't know already? If I can pass that, that means I know it. <laughs> <laughs> and no one's asking for it, what I want to do. You know, no one's going, can I see the equivalency test, please? I'm not going to try to be a doctor. Do you want to be in a movie, though? Do you want to be in a movie? I, I would want to do that, but I don't like auditioning. Uh... Which so is part of the process, take, sadly. takes a little so bit of that out of it. Um, just do my stand-up. That's my favorite thing to do. Right. Still fucking just the... Why do I curse so much? I don't know. Um, but, uh, but that's fun. But I do want to... You know what? If I was going to like... I would like a show called Camping with Todd. You know, maybe where I take uh, two comedians camping. Because once you get people out of the uh, element around a fire... It's a different type of an interview. And we don't try to make people camp. We don't go, the joke will be that if they don't want to camp, we'll make them. If any fuck, I don't want that shit. We'll have an RV. <laughs> yeah. If some people want to sleep in the RV because they don't want a tent, they will. If some people want a tent, they want a tent. That's what it is. And we also have a food truck there, so nobody has to fucking cook. We're trying oh. to make this fun. Right. You know what I mean? Like a food truck, we can get burgers and just anything we want. We wake up, there's coffee, breakfast. We're just getting away from the phone and the TV. That's the fucking shit. And I like the yeah, idea, too, of like somebody coming, like everybody comes out of their tent to gather around the fire, but instead it's just one, one single can one <laughs> candle. <laughs> one taper. Freezing. Taper. They're like, okay. That's uh, all we I'm need. I'm sorry, am I in your way of the, am I blocking <laughs> your, is my I, finger blocking the fire from you? I already thought that I could see people, even that I know and respect, Start leaning towards, oh, yeah, they have to make the comedians chop the wood. No, that would fucking blow. No yeah. comedians would want to do it. You yeah. just make it easy for them to get away from the world, and then everyone goes, that was fucking fun. That's There's some show where Hannibal Burris is put into unlikely situations. That prick, it, I knew he'd steal my idea. Uh, it is, uh, it's a terrible idea. You shouldn't put Hannibal Burris in a situation that he's unlikely, because it doesn't make him happy. And then, <laughs> like he, like he, had to, he had to shovel goat shit in some episode that's upcoming, he was telling me, and I I was like, that's not, I don't see you doing that. And he was like, oh, and you never will. You'll never see it again. And, uh, but that's what makes it kind of entertaining, I guess. It's uh, unlikely situations. It's like those unlikely friends, like when dolphins and dogs are friends or whatever, right? I mean, those are, those are, those get a million hits. True. <laughs> right. So, but you, you just want to, you want to bring people out into the woods away from their phones? Is that what you want to do? Get away from the phones, the TV. Some people go, oh, that's not even camping. It's, you're still getting away from the world. You know, when there's people sitting around a fire in the middle of the woods, it's, it's still crazy. It's different. You there's know? difference. What if there's a camera crew all around you? Then you know what? You mount it. You you if you have the if you have it your way. There's a note. You can mount cameras. Yeah, you know like what I'm survivor. talking about? Like yeah, with a with a web feed. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking it to the roads. You hey, mount cameras. You I'm hide them. You own this idea of like the food truck though. <laughs> because I thought like... about that. You're in cooking. the middle of talking, and somebody's like, eh. I'm sorry, I laid, I laid on the horn. We're going to leave the horn in 45 for a second. minutes. I didn't I'm mean only here to. for another 45 here's, here's my life. And I'm not I fuck up. I make mistakes. I learn. I'm not talking about that. Then I do. I do. I learn. But whenever it comes to my ideas, people, my constant life is get, explaining it, explaining it, have everyone be confused. And then when I do it, they're like, this is pretty cool. Because they can't, it's going to be a food truck. They'll park it over in the corner. People will, it won't be a, like honking the horn. Janice is all fucking <laughs> drugged up. Uh, <laughs> uh, but then it would be like you wouldn't have to cook. Cooking sucks. When you go camping, there's always somebody that's... Or 
If it's two people, it's fun. Be- or three or four. <laughs> but when you have a lot of people to cook for, someone's always the organizer. That's fucking me. So it blows. You know? I'm like, you know oh, what? why don't we put this away before we sit around the campfire? You know Fuck. what this reminds me of? I want to I wanna wanna get your reaction on this. I want to get your reaction on this because someone was telling me about this recently. Is when that thing where you... Um, when you're out camping and you, you take your food and you chew it up and then you spit it out back into some foil and then you cook it. Does anyone else know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Caitlin's nodding because someone brought it up, I think, on my podcast. But if I don't you could Google it. Was. It sounds like what, what a hardcore. What? what? It was? That's weird. It was a chess Who episode. and. God, All it. right. No, there's a thing where, like, you, you, if you go out camping, you, you, chew, you chew up your food, and then you put it into a little foil pouch, and then, and then you, you cook it, it over the, the fire, fire, and then you eat it. I bet Why that, is that I And better. I found that so, I was like, that's Why is not that a better? thing. That's not a thing. Why would that be a thing? I don't know. I bet I can is. guess. Maybe, look, if you're a hardcore camper, and I don't know, maybe there's, like, nothing to chop it up with. You don't, I don't know. You put it, you get, you break it down a little. I don't know. I'm too. trying to make shit up. Well, you got to rip the meat, the raw yeah. meat with your teeth, serious. and then put it in tin foil. Is it's there a baby raw. bird? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I want there to be a baby bird involved. Yes, that of is. Course. What, I mean, that's what. I, that's what I it feels know. like. It maybe it's thing. maybe it's like paleo, man. Maybe it's paleo. Yeah. Who's gonna name their kid paleo? Someone should name their kid yeah. paleo. Oh, right there. Excellent. Also, I just did think of one more thing. It's so unimportant. But when I was talking about <laughs> nobody wants to cook, I heard someone over here go, I like to cook. Then you could cook. If right. One of then those see comedians. that. Then that person comes yeah. and cooks. If there were comedians that go, we want to cook. It's sort of fun. We'll go get some fish. We'll frying pan on the fire. Fucking go ahead. Do it. Right. But what I don't, I don't understand about the camping is if you're not actually camping, what's the fun about the camping? Is it just the campfire? I'll tell you what. First of all, same thing with the tent. If people want a tent, which yeah. when I go camping, we put an RV on the site because it's okay. easier. But everybody tents. Everybody still sets up their tent. They tent. I sleep in the RV. Uh, this is more. You know what I want to do? I want to go. I want to. I want there to be time travel so I can go back to sixteen hundred and whatever and uh, go to Wisconsin and go camping in Wisconsin. And uh, but I don't know how to camp. So what I really want to do is go back in time and die of exposure. Uh, it's very sad. I would love to know how to camp. Camp like Survivor Camp. You know, not creepy. Like have you ever seen one of those Survivor shows where they're like eating scorpions, but there's like a fucking yucca cactus two feet away from him, and you're like, make a salad. What the fuck? And um, there's, I mean, because there's always like an edible cactus in the shot where they're eating scorpions. And you're like, why would you eat a scorpion when you could eat the, the, the food that grew out of the land? Uh, Can I answer your question, yeah. though? So, so I think I said it before, but you're still getting away from a lot of the elements of life. Okay. You know, and I did it the hardcore way. Like, I've gone camping with just tent, you know, black frying pan. You got the one cooler with beer and eggs over here and butter over there. The butter slips in. The fucking beers get oily. It fucking, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, sorry. The butter let loose in the cooler. So I said, Our, you know, that, that's what happens. Anybody that camps here knows there's a way. You got to bring a lot of plastic baggies, you know. Sure. I, I hung a shoe tree on a tree so there'd be pockets for like, okay, in here goes the, the you know, the pipes. No one else and is the, bringing the shoe tree. Yeah. The shoe tree. You know, like nice. a clear one. So you see 20 pockets. There's the keys to my car. There's matches. There's a lighter. It Otherwise, I was like, bears. where the fuck it is everything? It helps the bears. Yes. It helps bears with organization. organization. And then the toilet. Uh, to be honest, the RV, it's, it's like when, where we go, it's almost like it's, it's a way, but it's there. The toilet. Fuck it. I don't want, I don't care. People go, you're not hardcore camping. I go, good. Go use that outhouse. It's disgusting. If you've never done it, do you know what an outhouse is? Oh, yeah. It falls, it just goes right into the shit. It's disgusting. And I brought a can of isopropyl alcohol. I figure I'll just pour it on the toilet. You know, at least, you know, I know there's stuff. I have, you have to sit on toilets. I get it. I go to the bathroom here. and Because that's sat- not going to hurt the groundwater. It's what not, the fuck? The flies started coming up. It was fucking yeah. gross me out. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I poured it on. They're like, they came, like in a fucking movie, I swear to God. I'm like, are you fucking shitting me? And I fucking got out of there so fucking quick. Left the alcohol in there. Somebody probably thinks there's an alcoholic camping. He's in there with isopropyl alcohol trying to get away from his misery. So then every year I brought a, 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 an RV on site. It's our base. Everybody tents. Do whatever you want. Ladies and gentlemen, uh... I think we're going to have Todd Glass back on to talk about the joys of camping. And uh, this uh, has been a fascinating episode of The Dork Forest. Uh, Todd Glass, your website is ToddGlass.com? Yes. Uh, Ron Funches, RonFunches.com. JanetVarney.com. JackieCation.com. And uh, DorkForest.com. Thank you so much for supporting Alive Dork Forest, you guys. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of the Sketchfest. 
All right. That was great. Thanks so much for listening to the show, you guys. Uh, the bonus content, which is Andy and I discussing the show, uh, is available on the apps, the Libsyn sold apps. For some reason, Libsyn is also just posting it for free, so you don't have to buy the app. You can just go to tdf.libsyn.com if you're just downloading it to your iTunes and putting it on some other app to listen to all the different podcasts that you listen to. So if you want to listen to the bonus content, just go to tdf.libsyn.com, or you can buy the app if you want. And uh, you can also just go to iTunes, by the way, and review the show. iTunes supposedly cares about that. So if you're enjoying the show, and I read them. And that's great. And if you ever want to email me, Jackie at JackieCation.com. The credits, of course. Patrick Brady is going to fix this audio. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Mike Rickberg composed and sang the intro song. He's going to sing the Mexican hat dance right here in a moment. And Vilmos fixes the website, JackieCation.com, where, by the way, there is a donation button, JackieCation.com and DorkForest.com. Feel free to donate. I'd love everyone to give me 100 bucks a year. That is $8.33 a month. I have not figured out a way to make that easy for you. You would have to remember that. Or you can just throw me some money. If you don't have any money, uh, that's fine as well. But feel free to talk up the show. And if you would like merch, if you'd like a, a Dork Forest t-shirt or a CD of my stand-up comedy or would like to know where I'm doing stand-up, go to JackieCation.com and hook yourself up. There's also an Amazon banner. If you, want to, or if you ever order from Amazon, and we all do, go through JackieCation.com and the Amazon banner. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. See you next week. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?